to spend a few moments with you with this as our message title. Don't lock the door. Don't lock the door. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for this day and for the privilege that you've assigned me today, this task, to speak unto these, your people. Let your will be done. Not mine, but thine. Hide me behind the cross. Cover me with your anointing and your spirit. Speak to our needs, dear God. If any man have them here, and hear, let him hear what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Don't block the door, if you will, if you please. Don't block the door. This week, I was. Um, Traveling, had the opportunity, the privilege to spend a little time with my son down in Southern California, Los Angeles, helping him to move to a new and improved location. Praise God. And I thank God for it. All right. Yeah. All right. I needed to catch a flight to make it to Los Angeles. Just before the plane was scheduled to take off for the journey, there was a voice over the intercom that began to detail all the necessary safety precautions that we needed to know should the plane encounter problems along the way. I know we're all familiar with it. If you've ever traveled by plane, they spoke of the importance of staying securely fastened with the seatbelt during the flight in case we encountered unexpected turbulence. They informed us that if there were an unexpected loss of cabin pressure, that a oxygen mask would drop from the ceiling and that we would carefully, patiently, without panic, Place the oxygen mask over our nose and mouth, and as they say, breathe normally. I'm not sure how I would breathe normally, but they said it just the same. In other words, act like there ain't nothing happening. That's right. Trust <laughs> God. Hallelujah, mother. Then they, they stated that should we need to evacuate the airplane, that we should proceed to the nearest emergency exit door. And that we should look for the door before, before departing because the nearest door may be behind us. And that in the event that the cabin goes dark, there would be lights along the floor that would display to show the path that would lead to the exit. Well, I made it. Thank and I'm able to stand and tell you all about it. All right. 
later, it occurred to me that these instructions were not just appropriate for an airplane ride to Los Angeles. But these instructions also served as a metaphor for our journey through life. It occurred to me in my spiritual eye that just like the seatbelt, the Word of God anchors us during times of turbulence. In my spiritual eye, I began to consider that just like the oxygen mask, the Spirit of God quickens and refreshes us when life is void of purpose and meaning. And in times of darkness, when we are lost and need direction, Deacon Jones, I recognize that his word is a lamp to our feet. Deacon Hawkins, his word, I said, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. They said that if the cabin got dark, there would be lights along the floor to show you the way to the door. Aren't you glad this morning that his word is a lamp to your feet when you're in the dark? A light to your path to make certain that you find the way of escape. Now, let me tell you, that's not the end of the experience. After the general safety announcement was given to all the passengers, I saw a steward go stand next to the passengers, Minister Gaines, who were seated closest to the exit emergency doors. And what I observed, what I observed, Deacon Smith, was this. I observed the steward telling the passenger seated immediately next to the emergency exit doors, they were telling them the responsibility that comes with sitting next to the door. That's right. That's right. Amen. You know, we were all on the plane. We were all going somewhere. But those who were seated immediately next to yes, yes, the door yes. had had responsibility. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, let me tell you something, Pastor Ware. You see, experienced travelers know there's certain benefits with sitting next to <laughs> the emergency exit door. If anybody who's ever traveled, and if you have a chance to pick a seat, a lot of times your preference would be to sit next to the door because there you know you have an abundance of things. You have an abundance of leg room. That's right, I'm telling you, I, sitting next to the exit door has its privileges. Hallelujah. Sitting next to the exit door, praise the Lord, gives you not only an abundance of leg room, but you, you tend to have your seat just a little You see, when you are accustomed, hallelujah, Mother Brown, of traveling, you know that when you're next to the door, there's certain privileges. But the steward explained that in the event of an emergency, those who were in that privileged position would need to assist in helping get the door open so that others could escape safely. <laughs> Hallelujah, my friends. I'm here to tell you that each person who was seated in those 
privileged spaces were asked to affirm verbally, out loud, so it could be heard. That they would use their position next to the door to help others if circumstances required. How can I say I love God? And yet I'm not willing to help my brother. If I'm not close to the door, how can I say that I love being close to the door? See, they had to affirm that they would help others if circumstances required. If they were not willing or able to affirm this, then they could stay on the plane. But they'd have to move to another seat. Can I get a witness? Up in here somewhere, somebody. Can I get a witness? You can stay on the plane. But if you have desire to be that close to the door, you have to understand that something is required of you. Hallelujah. If you are going to be that close to the door. In other words, in other words, I can barely hear it, but I believe it was said. The steward said something to the fact that if you are going to be in this place, then you can't block the door. Amen. If you're going to be, if you're going to be in this space, you cannot block the door for others. Let me just get to it. I know you. I know you're not interested in my airplane ride. Let me just help somebody this morning. You see, as a disciple of Jesus, we should not expect to continue to occupy a privileged space in the kingdom of God if we are only going to sit down and block the door to Jesus. Oh, it's good to say I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But if all you desire to do is to sit down on your holy self. <laughs> While are screaming for help. While the world is spiraling into destruction. While your neighbor goes with need. And yet you so holy. Full of the Holy Ghost. On fire for God. Riding in the privileged place next to the door. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Can I tell you what the Bible says? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Huh? Can I tell you? Psalm 1 and 1 says, Bless. The word blessed means happy, favored. Let me tell you something about being next to the door is happy, favored. Blessed, blessed, happy, favored is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Let me say it to those who are listening. If you're listening, I want you to hear me. If you're not listening, I won't say it anyhow. The word of God reveals this morning that the blessings, the blessings of the kingdom, the blessings of the kingdom are truly abundant. Let me say it for those who care. The blessings of the kingdom are truly abundant, but they flow most abundantly to those who do not seek counsel from the ungodly. Sit with those who are scornful or stand in the way of sinners. Oh gosh, yes. Anywhere on the plane, you're going to make it to your destination. Yes. Anywhere on the plane, you're going to make it over those mountains. Anywhere on the plane, you're going to make it on your journey. But if you desire to be up close to the door, you see, there's some additional abundance 
that comes with being close to the door. Yes, there's an abundant, overflowing blessing awaiting those who are close to the door. But if you want to get that overflow abundant, don't stand in the way of sinners. Let me put it to you this way. Don't lock the door. Imagine this. Imagine, if you would, Brother Jackson, imagine today, imagine the anxiety that someone feels, might feel, of traveling in turbulent lifestyles without a means of escape. Having your path blocked by others who stand in the way. Yeah. Just share and imagine the anxiety of knowing there is a way out but somebody's blocking the door. So let me tell you this morning, today, we're examining a statement made by Jesus. We're halfway through in this series, this five-week series, where we have been focusing on the I Am statements of Jesus. For five weeks, I told you we would be unpacking from the Gospel of John statements made by Jesus where he declares, I Am. Today, we're looking at John, at John chapter number seven which is the third of a series of statements where Jesus expresses, I am. These I am proclamations point to his unique divine identity and purpose. You see, Jesus wants you to know just who he is. In this I am statement, Jesus points out for us the exclusive nature of salvation. There's only one way, my friends. Jesus points out for us in our text today the exclusive nature of salvation by saying that he is the door. He doesn't say I am a door. It's not as if you can pick door number one, door number two, door number three, take your pick. Is it a new car or is it a bale of hay? He's not a door. He is the door. Somebody say it right now where you are. He's the door. During these messages over this five week period we're examining these I am statements each of the declarations that we will be examining over these next few more weeks deepens our awareness and appreciation for what he offers to a sin cursed world A few weeks ago, we reminded you that Jesus said, for those who are hungry, I am the bread. I make provision for your life. Last week, we told you for those who are in the dark, I am the light. I'll show you the way. Today, we will examine his statement for those who are trapped. I'm the door. I'm your way out. Next week, God willing, for those who are alone, he will remind you that I'm also the good shepherd. You'll never be alone. And on Resurrection Sunday, those of you that will be with us here, those that will watch there, we will hear for those who are dead in sin, Jesus says, I am 
the resurrection, and the life. Now to get a clear picture of Jesus and what he meant in this, in this declaration, the I am the door declaration, it's important for us of all to understand a few things. We need to understand a little bit about ancient culture and we need also to understand what's involved in shepherding and caring for sheep. You see, you need to understand a few things about sheep. Of all domesticated animals, sheep are the most helpless. Sheep will spend their entire time during the day grazing, wandering from place to place, and never even looking up. Brother Thomas, sheep, they just eat all day long. As a result, they often become lost. Sheep will just stray away. Sheep have no homing instinct like many other animals do. They are totally incapable of finding their way to their sheepfold, even when it's in plain sight. Mother Woods, that's why they used to tell me when I was young, be careful, you act dumb as a sheep. It's in plain view and you still don't get it. Can I get an amen? amen. Sheep, sheep, sheep. They, by nature, sheep are followers. Yes. If the lead sheep steps off a cliff, all the rest don't follow. My mama used to tell me, boy, what you following everybody else for? If they gonna jump off the bridge, you gonna jump off the bridge too? Well, I guess. She saw it. Hallelujah. I'm still trying to get it, mother. Praise God. But I'm on my way home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what the prophet Isaiah had to say about this. The prophet Isaiah had to say it's not just Bishop Power you need to worry about. But Paul, Isaiah, he said, he said, oh, we like sheep. Now, come on now, come on, reel it on in now. I know you're looking this way, but let's reel it on in. Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. Can I get an amen in here? Can somebody just say, bah, bah, bah. That's me, that's me. All we, hallelujah, turned away every one to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah had to say that. Sheep are susceptible to injuries and utterly helpless against predators. If a wolf enters the pen, sheep can't even defend themselves. I want you to understand a little bit as we unpack this for you. They don't even de de defend themselves. They won't even try to run or spread out. Instead, they'll huddle together more easily for the slaughter. All we like sheep, the Bible says. Let me tell you, in ancient times, there were two kinds of sheepfolds or pens. One kind was a public sheepfold found in the cities and villages. It would be large enough to hold several flocks of sheep. It would be watched by a doorkeeper or a porter whose duty was to guard the door to the sheep during the night. And in the morning, they would open the door so that the shepherd could come. And when the shepherds came, they would call their sheep. And each sheep knows its shepherd's voice. So they would follow their shepherd to the pasture. That's one kind of sheepfold, but that's for another time. Today, I want to tell you about the second kind of sheepfold. This second kind of sheep pen was located out in the countryside, in the dark, in the dirt, away from civilization, out where predators were easy to be found, where the shepherds would keep their flocks at night. Now this type of sheep pen was nothing more than just a circle of stones stacked one on top of the other, piled into something similar to a wall, and it had a small opening on one side where the sheep would enter. And the shepherd, the shepherd would drive the sheep into this pen each night. And since there was no gate to close, the shepherd would keep the sheep safe from wild animals by lying across the opening. 
they would lay down and they would sleep there, the shepherd would. He would be the door to the sheep. Any intruders, let me say this to you, any intruders had to get by the shepherd to get to the sheep. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad about it? They can't get to you unless they come through Jesus. Don't that make you want to shout? Sister Cynthia, make me want to shout. Make me happy to know that can't nobody get to me unless they come through Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As the door, as the door, Sister Owens, as the door, he let his sheep in. But he kept out all of the predators. Hallelujah. Jesus says in verse 9 of our text today, he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Let's not miss that. Jesus says in verse number 9, he says, I am the door. If anyone, I want you to underline anyone in your Bible. That means everyone. That means me. That means you. It means the Asians. It means the Jew. It, it means the Italians. It, it means the Indians. It means the gay. It means the straight. It means the black. It means the white. It means the young. It, it, can, can you help me to define anyone? Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you just among the anyone? You see, the Bible declares, if you look at it closely, he said, I am the door if anyone. You see, this door is big enough for everyone because anyone can come in. Oh, that's shouting time. If you don't go to shout on that, you don't have no Jesus in you. I said, this door is big enough for everyone because anyone can come in. He said, if anyone enter in by me, praise the Lord, Jesus is the door. And he declares... Hallelujah, that if you choose this door, if you elect this door, if you choose to come through this door, you will get three things. For those of you that care, those of you that are taking notes, you get three things when you come through this door. He tells you right here in verse number nine, you may not see it, but I'm going to tell you. He says, first of all, you, hallelujah, will be saved. If you come through this door, salvation is yours. Yes, yes. Secondly, he says, if you come through this door, you will be able to go in and out. Praise God. That means you got freedom when you come through this door. You're not bound up anymore. You're not in chains anymore. You are not locked down to your past anymore. You are not overwhelmed by your obstacles anymore because you can come and go. You got freedom when you come through this door. Jesus said you get three things when you come through this door and this last one. I embrace this last one, Brother Thomas. It means a lot to me lately. He says that when you come through this door, you'll find pasture. Praise the Lord. That means you'll have rest. Hallelujah, Mother Woods. Hallelujah. You want some rest today. Praise God. Has the journey been hard? Have the roads been rough? Have the hills been hard to climb? I need to tell somebody who doesn't Something. He gives you freedom to something. And he gives you rest in something. And his name is Jesus. Let me tell you, my friends, just in case you don't know, if I don't have time to say it again, I'm going to say it now. You need to choose that door. I need to tell you this morning, you need to choose that door, the door, not just any door will do. You got to choose the door that leads to salvation. You got to choose the door that leads to freedom. You need to choose the door that leads to rest. You can choose this door by doing three things. It's interesting. You get three things when you give three things. 
What you have to do to choose this door is first believe Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And two, believe He died on the cross for the sins of the world and rose on the third day from the grave. And three, accept Him into your heart and uh, allow Him to be Lord and Savior over your life. Praise God. I want to know this morning, do you want to walk through that door with me? And so it is that Jesus reveals to his disciples that he is the true door to freedom and safety. He is the door, not just a door. There is no other door to the Father but by him. He is the door that provides us with both access as well as security. When we find ourselves engulfed in darkness... The darkness of life. It is through Jesus that we are able to find our way to help in times of trouble. How do I know it? Because he is the light of the world. You see, through this door, we can obtain access. Yes, indeed, Mother Brown, we have access. This means that because of Jesus, we are able to freely come and freely go. Praise the Lord to the throne of God. And seek salvation and seek remedy for the sins that we have committed in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 in the New American Standard Bible it says and there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we can be served you see he is the door if you want salvation if you want freedom if you need some rest this morning I invite you to this door. We are not only able to come to him for safety from struggles in life, Brother Deacon Smith. No, no, no. But we are able to exit to green pastures. I wish I had a holiday in this place this morning. We can go to green pastures, praise the Lord, and still waters to obtain the abundance that he brings. Praise the Lord with me right now. You see, my friends, he provides he provides access. Thank you, Lord, to all the sustenance needed in life. How do I know he can provide access? Because he said, I am the bread of life. He gives you everything you need. Hallelujah. Just say everything. Wherever you are, just say everything. Type it on your screen. Everything. Hallelujah. Type it on your phone. Everything. Speak it out loud. Everything. Everything. He is my everything. Hallelujah. John 10 and 10 in the Amplified Version says the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have and enjoy life. Have it in abundance to the full and overflowing. Can I get a witness? Anybody want an overflow blessing? Praise the Lord. He is the door that provides us with security against the attacks that Satan lays in wait to bring against you. Knowing, knowing that the world is full of predators, isn't it? Yes, it's full of hatred. It's full of bigotry. It's full of evil. The world is full of predators whose sole intent is to destroy you. Hallelujah. We are always under the protection of the door. Hallelujah. Peter says in Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 8 in the NIV, be alert, be alert, be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But praise God this morning. I'm here to tell you, Satan needs to know he can't get to me unless he comes through Jesus. He can't get to you unless he comes through Jesus. So let me, hallelujah, reveal this to all of you who are sitting next to the door this morning. All of you who have come through this door this morning. It is the responsibility of every Christian disciple to show others the way to the door. Let me say it as I hallelujah wrap this in a bow and put it in a box. You, you my friends, 
just need to tell somebody, uh, praise the Lord, about this door. He is the door. Praise God. Tell him the church is not the door. Jesus is. Tell him the preacher is not the door. Jesus is. Tell him, hallelujah, the building is not the door. Jesus is. Tell somebody, Sister Owens, the music is not the door. Jesus is. Uh, your husband is not the door. Jesus is. Your wife is not the door. Jesus is. Your children are not the door. Jesus is. Yeah, your money. Your money is not the door. It's Jesus. Tell somebody. Uh, you got to come to the door if you want salvation, if you want freedom, if you want rest this morning. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them that this is the door and Jesus is his name. Let me, saints of God, reveal this final truth. Christians must, hallelujah, must complete their assignment. You who are a believer, you own this plane. You're sitting next to the door. You're experiencing the favor and abundance that comes by being next to the door. Christians, hallelujah, we have to complete our assignment. Hallelujah. What is that, preacher? I'm glad somebody wants to know. This assignment is a simple assignment. It's simple for anyone who themselves has passed through the door. If you walk through the door, you ought to know something about it. If you walk through the door, you ought to know how you found it. If you walk through the door, you ought to know where it is, my friends. Hallelujah. All we must do is point the way to the door. You don't have to be the door. Just point the way to the door. Can I get a witness? Yes, point the way so others can choose to come through. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Hallelujah. And the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely, oh surely, I'm with you always to the very end of age. Christians, my friends, who are not pointing the way to the door are blocking the way to others from the door. If you this morning aren't pointing the way to the door, you are blocking the door for somebody else. The world, saints of God, is at a crossroads and we must point them to the door. People and families are trapped. They need the door and have no way of finding freedom from sin. We must, we shall, we are determined, I am determined to not stand in the way. You need to be determined to not stand in the way. This morning you need to tell yourself, I'm going to point the way to the door. Let me tell somebody who needs to know if this is all you hear this morning, the door is open. The door is open to anybody and everybody. But you must, hallelujah, walk through the door. I'm ready to say hallelujah. I'm all done now. So anybody who's here, I need you to tell yourself, I'm either going to show the door or I'm going to walk through the door. Receive salvation, 
freedom and rest. I'm going to pray with you this morning, and if you, my friends, are looking for a relationship with Jesus, you must come through this door. I've already told you there's three things you'll need to do in order to come through this door, and it's time for you to make that decision today. Because the Lord is coming back again. And you need to be ready so that you can indeed be counted among the saints. The Bible says that when he comes, he's going to separate his sheep from the goat. You want to be in the number of sheep. So today I want you just to pray with me as I pray with you. Father in heaven, we thank you today for another day of service, another day of your favor. Now, Lord, we know all of we like sheep have gone astray. We know that you took upon yourself the pain and penalty of sin. And we thank you for that. Now, Lord, for those who are praying with me, who have not confessed you, Lord, we ask that they would confess you right now. Acknowledge that they have sinned. Acknowledge that they know that you died and you rose on the third day with all power in your hands. And we pray today, Lord, that you would bless them with salvation. To those who know you, Lord, help us to recommit ourselves not to stand in the way as we sit in our privileged place with you. Help us to usher in, show others the way. For there's room at the cross for everyone. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Now, my friends, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I want you to make a decision wherever you are to say yes to Jesus Christ. And he invites you to come through the door. If you want to be saved and you believe that Jesus has died and you want to affirm that now, I want you to send us an email to seed of faith at comcast.net. Seed of faith at comcast.net. Do it today. And we will pray with you that your journey will be one filled with faith. If you're already a believer and you've strayed or Perhaps you haven't connected with the church and you want to be a part of the fellowship of believers. We invite you to join this ministry. All you need to do is to send us an email. See the faith at Comcast.net and we will connect with you and we will walk alongside you and if necessary refer you to another church where you can continue.